So sitting before you today here at Salvage Workshop is another old machine we're going to rescue. This is an old Broderson crane. The plan today is to do a quick walk around, check it out, and get it out of here. So I don't know if I'm going to mess with even putting a battery on it or if we're just going to winch it onto the trailer and take it back to the shop. We'll do a little bit of looking and decide from there. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another rescue here at Salvage Workshop. Now this could be a very useful machine. It is a Broderson crane. So this is called a deck crane. You can tell because it has a deck. Simple, right? But the beauty of these things is that not only are they drivable and they can move around on their own, operate as a crane, but they have the ability to set their load on the deck here and possibly even on this section of the deck. I don't know. So I don't really know a lot about this unit. I know it's been sitting here for quite some time. I'm kind of wondering if maybe we will have to try and start it because those outriggers there are in the ground, that one too. But looks like it's got some decent lights. Maybe it was a police rig at one time, so that's cool. And the way these work is the whole center is a turret, and so it can rotate around, but the driver and the operator does not. So it is kind of one of those neck breaker situations that you're uh, kind of bending your head at all different angles. But what we have under the hood here, we've got a little four cylinder Ford diesel engine, I believe, from the looks of it. So, yeah, hydraulic pump maybe right there, hydraulic cooler, radiator. Well, that line going into the exhaust looks real nice. But man, this thing's heavy. Ugh. It's like at least quarter inch plate. And these are all built in as far as the uh, counterweights in these beasts. Let's start by getting this thing uncovered and then we can go from there and decide what the plan is going to be and the way in which we're going to get it out of here. I'm pretty sure that this goes up here. Like, not like that. Those are for your high speed pursuits. I have never seen a trailer plug with three, four pin. Yeah, I don't know. Got some rock climbing rope. Some earmuffs. Put these on in case of really extreme cold. Strap. Speaker. Oh, yeah. old heavy truck fuel lines. I just don't understand this. I guess it's what happens sometimes. Those were nice.
Yeah, I'd say that drive shaft is got a little life left. Clean out. Some more rope. I need to take an expedition. All this rope. Sort of wire. Some more wire. Some more rope. Oh yeah. That's got to be the switch panel for that light bar there. All right, well, we got it all cleaned off. That tire might have air. That one might too, it's a little low looking. Let's check out the uh, driver compartment. It's a little bit crispy. The seat is Bluetooth. Let's see, we got a rag. Never know if we need those pliers. Definitely don't want to pull that parking brake that's not set. So, I see battery cables that come out under the seat. Well, that's a sign, so she's a hard starter. What else we got in there? Oh, look at that little can of PV blaster. Oh yeah, is it still spray? Yeah, it's got some drizzle. And those floors are, uh, chipping up. I don't know if that goes all the way through or not. I don't really want to find out right now. All right, so let's sit down in here. Well, first off, let's check this out. This is our crane capacity chart. So we have a Broderson IC71A is what I believe it is, not a 701A. From the little bit of research I did, it's a 70 all the way in and as high as it'll go with the outriggers out it'll do 12,000 pounds 10,000 otherwise on down to if you're driving 625 pounds all the way out and that's not with the jib the jib is the third uh the third extension i believe that you can pull out by hand um or no it must be this the swing out i don't know if this one has a jib or not I didn't see one, not sure, but so serial is 192B. So that's a, that's a small, low, low number. Um, what do we got here? Hobbs hour meter with 1,308 hours. That seems low. If that's original, that'd actually probably be a good thing. Got our oil temp, amp gauge, fuel meter, headlights. There's our transmission. So I'm betting this, so that feels like neutral. First, second, third, neutral. And then over here we got a uh, air pressure gauge, forward reverse shift pedal must be in neutral to start engine so we got this one i would think maybe that's brakes i doubt we have any and then one of these got to be throttle and then one of these maybe our forward reverse shift pedal this one moves oh look at that A little high low beam switch for uh headlights and then up top here, this is our lower and up and down with the hoist. And then these are the outriggers, maybe? The boom, raise, and lower. And then out, no, these are outriggers. Outrigger up and down, left and right. Lower and raise the boom. Extend in and out with the telescope, retract. And I'm not sure what this one is because 
we have no label here. So that one would just be a mystery. I don't know what that thing is. Some fancy dancy uh, ashtray maybe? Missing a gauge there. I kind of guess that's oil temperature. I kind of guess we're looking at coolant temperature maybe. The coolant gauge is missing. And then whatever those are, they don't go to anywhere. And they got a bunch of wires down there just taped over. I don't want to touch anything, it's so crunchy. So, yeah, uh, is, that, is that a heater? Oh, it is. Check that out. Little heater. I'm guessing that's the switch right there. Pretty basic cab. And then, yep, that would run these lights. These are our headlights. There's our snatch block or our crane pulley. Some of these had a big winch right here in the front, and that's, I see a big metal plate right there, and I believe from the pictures I've seen, that's where it would be located at. Now you see this big I-beam? I gotta get this out of the way before I can move this. Is that fuel? It kinda looks like it might be our, our uh, fuel tank down in there. And because it's at a 90, I'm not gonna be able to see anything. Yeah, you can't see anything. Okay, so here's our exhaust, I think. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Oh, that's air intake. This is that whole exhaust. See this, is there's no, there's no cap on it. So it, the water's been going right down here. Luckily, it's kind of just been filling up this rate, this uh, exhaust and then, you know, rotting it out, because it would have to fill all the way up for then to fill and go down into the engine. And then here's our air intake. This pipe must slide in there somehow. Yeah, we'll mess with that later. So, and then there's our big turntable right here. And that is what the whole boom swivels on. That tire looks like it's got air. And that one actually looks like it's got air. What size are these? Um, 9R or 9.00-15TR. Yeah, they're starting to chunk. They're fa falling apart. But, they're there. What's that? Is that fuel too? Yeah, it says diesel right there. Diesel. Huh. Maybe that other one up there is uh, hydraulic oil. <laughs> Glad we uh, figured that out before I put something in it. And there's... One of the outriggers down. And then that outrigger is down. That outrigger is down and so is the front one. Great. Here, that's gotta be a backup alarm. I hate backup alarms. I get them, I do understand them. But for me, as working alone as much as I do, I just, can't stand them, especially when I'm editing video that I've shot with a backup alarm. It just it just takes away from the quality. And you could not get something to look like that if you tried. Look at that patina on that thing, man. Like, do you take the paint off? Man. I know some people might not like patinaed machines, but I think if you clean all the chipping off this thing, it could be cool. Apparently, it's not a, a Ford engine. It's a Cat diesel power. Oh yeah. Highly doubt that's right, but... Oh, and then we got a light back here too. And that side window opens. Oh yeah, I didn't notice that. All right, well let's pop this. Yeah. See if we can find a way to hold it up. Is that what this is for? 
it is. Looky there. Now I won't slam on my head. All right. So this says eaten on it. I believe that might be some sort of a emergency air shutoff switch, possibly. There's our injection pump right there. That, that filter didn't look too bad. That Baldwin there, it's a BF828. That looks fairly new. Let's see, that oil filter says 311 or 3. One, yeah, maybe 11 something. 18 so we know at least 2018 it got a new oil filter maybe it ran then maybe not so we got a motorola alternator with a mud dauber nest on it no let's check the coolant let's see if it has any but kind of looks moist in there you see the dipstick anywhere don't tell me that's it right there No, that's oil fill. Dipstick. Oh, there it is. Way down here. That didn't look too bad. So we're right about there-ish. See any marks on it? Full mark is here. Let's see where we're at. Oh yeah, we're over full. Let's see. We are about right there-ish. And yeah, I am betting, I'm betting that we got water in the engine just because of an open exhaust. This is one of those flexi exhaust pipe tubes that whatever, if water ran right down here, you see that crack right there? That crack would let water right into the engine. This intake pipe is also Wi-Fi for right now. Let's see if I can get this engine to turn over by hand. Okay, yeah, it's moving. It moved a little bit, so I don't know how stuck that means it is or isn't, but I want to just put a battery on it and we'll see what happens. Usually if you can get a diesel just moving that's been sitting and it's not completely stuck, then you have less of an issue of it damaging it too bad. I don't want to run along with the oil that's in it, especially if it's got water in it. I don't know if that's water from outside or if it's water from ahead, but I'm betting it's water from outside just due to the way that the intake and exhaust are working and set up. So, yeah. I don't think there's any chance this thing is a uh, 24 volt system. These batteries are going to be any good either. Or battery leads. Oh, wrong one. We're gonna try twelve. Hey, yeah, headlight works. Rear light? No. We got one light. Means it's getting power somewhere, so let's uh Ooh, button. It's gotta be the start button, but Not sure which way means start. Is that that's just like Yeah, that's just an on-off switch. 
Maybe that's a horn. I don't know. There's a starter right down there. So I don't have my handheld race trigger. So my thought is to grab a chunk of wire out of this pile and maybe use it. And just touch the two of them, try and cross some posts, see if we can get it to crank. All right, got my wire. I don't know what this button does. There's only two posts. <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> well, it's not the starter button. We've got a horn. I don't even see a key in here. It's got a little lever switch for Basically, I'd, best, I'd bet kill and power to the fuel injection pump. Forward reverse pedal must be neutral to start engine. Like this button here, is that start? Maybe that's not a button. Huh. There is this like button thing that was in the floor. No wires were going to it. Hang on to that. I'm not sure what that did. Hard part is the starter solenoid is not easily accessible. It's on the bottom side of the starter, I think. And as you can tell, this thing is in the dirt. It's wet and muddy out. And I just want to see if it cranks. Oops. Looks like our horn just started working. That's what I jammed in there, which I don't know if he's gonna open up. No. Nope. Alright, I gotta figure out a way to get that out. Alright. This switch is not just the style that you can just turn. You have to turn it up, push it down, and then you can switch it up and try and start it like that so plus you have to have a pedal somewhere in the neutral area i don't know what that means so i've just been kind of moving it this one down here is definitely in the middle of our brake we have nothing and this one's our throttle so there's a little bit of so all the way back is low throttle idle and all the way forward is full throttle so I'm gonna just kind of give it in the middle. Maybe there's a neutral safety switch, I doubt it. Let me grab some pliers so I can pull that out so it's not stuck. Actually, let's grab some PB blaster. Let's, let's get that soaking a little bit. All right. Maybe a little more blaster. All right, let's hook our battery back up. All the safety. That's really sketchy. Perfect. Okay, horn works. Hey, we got crank. I think it, that sound we're hearing is this fan shroud. Try it again. 
I'm betting it might need some uh, starting fluid. We're going to try and use the starter to raise the outriggers. got these side is up but this side that side's almost up all right watch right there all right they're coming up there's a there's a leak in the cab somewhere all right well it's starting to rain on me I really don't want to get soaked. We know it cranks. I don't know what kind of compression it has. I don't know how much, how good the engine is. I really think water got down in it and maybe the rings are ruined or I don't know. It's, it is what it is right now. At least we got that outrigger up that far the other one is four or five maybe three or four inches off the ground and these two are just all the way tucked up and in this side is that one actually might be leaking down already can't tell so let's kind of get some tools out of here and just get ready to start just winching it onto the bed of the trailer like i told you i didn't know if we were going to try and get it running or just haul it out of here at this point i don't want to get it running here I'd like to have more tools in a better environment, and I know I can handle getting this thing on the trailer, so let's go that route. All right, let's give it one more shot. One more shot on 24 volt. Not even getting any smoke. I definitely think we have absolutely no fuel getting to the injection pump for sure and then i don't know if there's no something's blocked up in the air intake because i have the pipe off we're not going through the air filter at all we're going straight down into the engine so i don't know that's all i'm going to try it for here let's get it all finished clean it up get all this stuff off it closed up and start working on getting that i-beam out of here well <laughs> i just took the elbow that goes down into the uh, air intake off That's not good. Now, luckily, 
this elbow was loose. I'll try and show you how this works. And I, it doesn't mean it didn't suck anything in. So right, right down there, you see this little elbow? That little elbow is where air, air goes down. Like that. So it would come in over here, go down that elbow into this little U area. And then it has to come back up into this intake manifold. And so the saving grace could be that everything rusty settled down into the middle of that, those two elbows. I don't know. So I'm not even going to mess beyond this, especially here now that I see that. I want to take off the intake manifold and see how it looks inside before we really try too much harder to get it started. I don't want to suck all that dust and dirt and debris in there and then have it ruin the rings. So that's a for sure stopper. I think the plan is instead of uh, leaving that in there, I'm going to take this out and then maybe turn it over and face it straight. Face it straight down. Well, worst case scenario, I just take that out and then put something like a rag in that pipe, a zip tie a bag over it or something. Just keep water out of it. We'll take this intake pipe off as well because it's not attached to the filter anyway, so. Yeah, this will be fine for now. I have hope now. Maybe it just wasn't getting the starting fluid down in there through it. Plus, I was using bad bad starting fluid and then brake cleaner, so.
So our outrigger, I can't get it up anymore, and it's hitting the ramp. So I'm going to dig out the ramp a little bit. That might do it. Another one, another machine safely rescued and back home. But now the fun part is unloading it, and eventually we'll get around to figuring out what's wrong with it. But for now, let's get it off the trailer. We'll put it in the in-op row. Now that we got it back to the shop, I want to address the potential for water getting into this engine. And there's this air intake that's just flopping, and then there's this exhaust pipe. And this exhaust pipe, it has this crack right there. And so water could easily run down this pipe and literally, if it's pouring enough, go right in there and go right down into the exhaust. This is not original anyway. There should not be a, an air cleaner there or a muffler. The muffler would have been underneath and the air cleaner would have sat right behind the cab 
right about there. And I plan on relocating those to where they should go. And number one, we've got a, a pretty Bluetooth muffler anyway. So right now, this is not even connected for the air cleaner. I have it disconnected down there. And then my thought is for the exhaust, we disconnect it as well, turn this pipe down a little bit just to have something so that it's not just straight into that manifold there. So let's, let's do that because I don't know how soon I'm going to get back to this, but I also don't want it to get worse while it's sitting. So let's jump into that for now and we'll go from there. So there's our little elbow, and I believe it was cut just like a slit in it to be able to reduce the size, but they never welded it back up. So instead of having it up like this, I'm gonna angle it down like that for now. And then if you look right here, so I can light in there for you. Right there, that's our air intake. And so I removed the, there was a 90 coming up and a 90 coming out. And so I removed that so water cannot, I guess, directly get in it. On top of that, the elbow comes straight over an angle and then it has to come up into this manifold right here, the intake manifold. So that 90 shouldn't collect water. All right, so one last thing I want to do before I basically close this up and let it sit is I want to cover the intake hole and the exhaust hole because I do not want mice getting in there building a nest and causing more issues than maybe we already have. So I'm going to use Scotch-Brite. We're going to cut a piece of it. We're going to zip tie it around and it works very well to deter mice. They don't like to chew through this. They'd rather just find another place to live. So. We're gonna zip tie that on there. The other thing it's gonna do is let the engine breathe. So any condensation that does build up due to heating and cooling in the engine won't just completely be stuck. It will have a way to get out through the exhaust pipe or the air intake hole. So this will work for now. And the other side of it is if I do forget or later I sell this or somebody else acquires it, it's not like those two holes are completely blocked and plugged air will still flow through this, similar to how it would do through a filter.
Okay, now I feel a bit more comfortable. Water's not gonna go directly down into the exhaust pipe or into the air intake. We'll keep the mice out. And I honestly don't know what engine this is. They said it was like a four cylinder Ford, but it's got these injectors here that are internal to the head, I guess. Um, I'm not familiar with that, but maybe this was repowered. I don't really know. So yeah, from the research I've done, these IC70s or whatever should be a, a uh, Perkins diesel maybe, uh, possibly a Kubota, but this is not coming up on all the research I'm doing. Now, it doesn't change the fact that this is the engine in it. I'm not gonna swap it out and put a different one in, especially if we can get this one running. So yeah, if you know any information on that engine or you're familiar with these cranes, definitely leave some comments and let me know your thoughts. But it's just a diesel engine. We'll either get it running or we won't, right? So at least for now we've kind of eliminated any problems of it getting worse. I, I might pull the drain plug and see if there's water in the bottom of the oil pan to try and prevent that from freezing. And the other reason I want to remove the exhaust pipe and the air intake is these are called deck cranes. They're called deck cranes for a reason. You are have the ability to lift things and set them on the deck and then drive somewhere else and then unload them. Well, this long deck here is for setting things that are longer, I-beams, pipe, you name it. And it even has these one, two, three, four post holes where you could stick a round pipe into them and then that would allow you some sort of a barrier so that stuff wouldn't roll or fall off as you're driving. And it's got two on that side and one on that side. And so again, giving you the ability to move things on the machine without having to have it swinging from the, the crane itself. So when you look at this here, this completely eliminates the ability to use most of the size, especially for longer things. So I'm gonna relocate, since literally this, this air cleaner right now is completely Wi-Fi. I mean, there is nothing connected to it other than the four bolts holding it. That'll be easy. That I'll probably stick right behind the cab right there. And this exhaust pipe, well, this exhaust pipe's gone, is garbage. I mean, look at that. That's what's coming out of it. It's... <sighs> can open it like a tin can, man. Look at that. That's just bad. So that won't even get reused, but I'll find another one and I'll try and tuck it down in here somewhere or underneath at the back. I'll try and figure out where they are from the factory and see if I can route the exhaust pipe down that way. And then that would open up the length of deck here to be able to put things here and then you'd have all of the front. And the only thing that'd be sticking out and eliminate any space would be the air cleaner right there. But you'd still have a small spot right there if you wanted to, or to be able to put things across this way. So yeah, that's definitely uh, on the list. But for now, these two things are not in the way. I might go ahead and take this air cleaner off just so it doesn't end up. Oh wow, there's already a mud dauber nest in it. See that? There it is. So I'm sure that filter is no good. But I don't want to really eliminate the housing. So maybe we'll take that off now as well. It's only going to take a minute. There's four bolts holding it. So Whoever mounted this here mounted it right to the deck and they literally just threaded the holes so there's no nuts on the bottom so that was actually nice quick and easy so I will store that inside somewhere and we'll get it put back on later and you know
know what? I might as well take this exhaust off too. Since it's Bluetooth. Much better. Gotta get my key. Gotta give it a little taste of the good stuff. Uh, I need to get a jumper pack. What I really need to do is fix the alternator so it charges the battery rather than I don't know, I need to do a lot to this machine to get to the point where it is probably correct. I don't know. It has been so loyal that it deserves to be gone through soon. So that's going to be an upcoming video. For now, let's just get it started so we can get that crane off there. Jumper pack on. Didn't even need the good stuff. Bingo. All right, so one thing I noticed once we got it on the trailer is that that steering cylinder right there broke, broke right off that knuckle. And so, yeah, I don't, I don't really have a problem fixing it. It looks like it's far enough out that it's literally just going to be welding that back on to here. Um, but for now, I do not want to break it. So I'm going to try and maybe zip tie it up like that. It should look like that where it's connected to the, the actual wheel. But I do not know when that happened. It's very possible it happened when we were recovering this because obviously it was getting shoved around by a pretty good sized loader. So I think I'm gonna zip tie it up something like that for this moment. At least it won't be dragging. And I don't want, definitely don't want it to hit the ramps. Well, not how I normally do it, but since I'm putting air in the tires, I think that the chain was holding it down.
So that wheel basically because it wasn't attached to anything, it started going one way across the whole machine this way. I'm gonna get forklift to try and lift it up that way and move it over. Little redneck engineering right here.
So the dang steering cylinders are, well, the one's broken. So all it wants to do every time I try and push it back straight is quickly turn like that. And the only way I can think to fix that is to chain the steering straight. And I'm over it for tonight. I'm done. It's going to sit right there. It's not in the way. So it is what it is. Okay, check it out. So last night we got the crane completely unloaded and mostly moved into where I wanted. I was gonna stick it right here near the wheel loader. Problem is, every time I'd push it backwards, this wheel would squirrel that way, and the whole thing would just angle that way. And we know why. Obviously, it's that that broken, um, that broken steering cylinder there. And so, that's gotta be a very soon fix. The other thing, I don't know what engine this is. I can't find a badge or any other information on the engine anywhere. And so if you know what engine this is, I would love to know so that I can figure out what it is and what parts I need I need to get for it or if I end up needing them. Also tell me if you have any experience with in, you know, uh diesels that have injectors like this, like basically in the head. I've actually never seen that. So, whatever, at the end of the day, we will make another attempt to get it running. So, just not today. The big goal was to get it off the truck and trailer and have it here so that when I get around to it, I've got it. Um, it's one of those situations where, had we not gotten it, it literally probably would have ended up at a scrapyard. I'm excited to have it. It's, it's going to be useful. You know, she's got some damage. You know, there's, there's some body panels here. This whole big front piece, they welded on over. There should be a set of headlights on each side. They welded a plate over that. Um, you know, it's bent up and as far as like the body panels go, but everything else is solid. I mean, it is like built like a tank. So I don't know, I don't have a jib for it, which would be an additional extending piece that would swing out. This is the jib. So you have your main boom with not extended, then you have one, two extensions, and then your jib is this additional third piece. So that, um, it would allow you to get out further, but it also really limits the ability of how much it can lift and how much it can move. But this is an IC70, and I can't find much information on IC70s. Most of what I see is IC60s and IC80s. Um, I need to find a manual for it, but all in time, we'll, we'll get it figured out. But so far, so good. We got it back to the shop, got it parked close enough to where I want it for now, and we'll jump back on this another time. We saved another one from the crusher here at Salvage Workshop. This machine was absolutely destined to be scrapped, and I am glad we were able to get it. I really kind of wish we could have gotten it started, but We'll dive into that more when we when we have more time, when the weather's a little better. If you have any information on these old dogs, if you've run one, definitely leave me a comment below. I truly appreciate you spending time here at Salvage Workshop. You could be doing a lot of other things, but spending your time watching my videos is truly an honor. Thank you for joining me here at Salvage Workshop on another adventure. Have a great one.